Thanks for staying with us here at 730. If you've been through it or someone close to you has been through it, you know the agony felt when someone struggles to get pregnant. It's hard. It's hard to watch everyone you know, your friends, having babies. People got you know married after you got married. People who had started trying and got pregnant that next month. So I was struggling. Sarah Ikes has been on our newscast a couple of times. She knows the struggle firsthand and started a support group to help others. And having someone to talk to to share what you're going through is important because issues with fertility are fairly common. In fact, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says one in five married women with no prior births are unable to get pregnant after one year of trying. One in four have trouble carrying a pregnancy to term. It's why the most recent debate over in vitro fertilization, IVF, has struck a nerve with so many. Protesters gathered at the state capitol in Alabama yesterday. They want IVF to be protected after the state's Supreme Court ruled embryos have the same rights as people. Clinics in the state have paused doing the procedure because of the questions the ruling creates over what can happen to unused frozen embryos. Nobody who is here wants to be here. Nobody who does IVF wants to do IVF. We're all here because this is our only choice. Well, the most recent data we have from the CDC is from 2021, and it shows here in North Carolina almost 6,000 assisted reproductive technology procedures were performed that year. Most of those were IVF. In South Carolina, the number was just over 2,300. In both states, about 42% of those procedures ended in a live pregnancy, a family. The pause in Alabama has many concerned it could happen in other states. One of those is South Carolina. And our state house reporter Mary Green has details on an effort to introduce legislation that would protect access to IVF. On Thursday, some lawmakers shared their experiences with what can be a challenging and expensive procedure that ultimately is worth it for so many families. It's why they say they've filed bills here at the state house to protect IVF services across South Carolina. To rip away the ability of parenthood is heartless, cruel, and unacceptable. This is personal for me. But for IVF, my family would not have had the opportunity to expand. The bill's sponsors are predominantly Democrats with some Republican support. Governor Henry McMaster says he hasn't yet read the bills or the Alabama court's decision. I think anything to, uh, to allow and, and protect the, the ability of, of parents, people who want to be parents, to be parents, have beautiful babies is a good thing. But one leading Republican lawmaker says this legislation isn't needed. What played out in Alabama can't play out in South Carolina. Senate Majority Leader Shane Massey says he's not concerned, pointing to how Alabama has enacted a ban on abortion from conception, while South Carolina has a ban from six weeks into a pregnancy. And that's what, what was a big part of the Supreme Court opinion down there. That's not what our law is. I am confident that IVF is pretty protected in South Carolina. But supporters of these bills point to South Carolina's existing abortion law, the six week ban. It defines unborn child as an individual organism of the species Homo sapiens from conception until live birth and conception as fertilization of an ovum by sperm. They say by that definition, conception is happening outside the uterus through IVF. If the court looked at our statutes the way that the Alabama Supreme Court looked at their statute, there is in fact an interpretation that would lead them to be able to say the very same thing, that IVF in this state would be wrong because they could, they could consider an embryo to be a child. These bills aim to protect IVF by codifying in state law that any fertilized human egg or human embryo that exists in any form outside the uterus shall not be considered an unborn child. Without this addition, they say IVF could be threatened in South Carolina. Family matters. We need to protect a family's right to have in vitro fertilization. Both the House bill and the Senate bill were just introduced this week and assigned to their respective judiciary committees. Reporting from the State House, I'm Mary Green.